In Cochin's synaptic transmission case, students act as a neurologist to learn and apply the concepts of synaptic transmission. Their patient is Dennis, a man who has been experiencing tremors and other problems with his motor control. First, students go to the cellular level to learn how neurons trigger a muscle cell to contract. They review the anatomy of a synapse and how vesicles release neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. This is the action responsible for signaling between neurons. Next, students trace the motor neurons back to the spinal cord and to the brain. They observe that a muscle contraction begins with dopamine signaling from the brain. They then learn about the production of dopamine, a neurotransmitter that is critical to movement. If dopamine is not produced normally in the brain, a patient will not have normal muscle control. Students then learn about three issues which affect the synaptic transmission of dopamine, Wilson's disease, Parkinson's, and medication for schizophrenia. Using data from the three major regions of a synapse, students can then determine how the production of dopamine has been affected. This allows them to determine Dennis's disease and construct a successful hypothesis. Students then learn how to treat Dennis's symptoms. One treatment increases the activity of an enzyme that produces dopamine. Another treatment decreases the activity of an enzyme that breaks dopamine down. Both options serve to increase Dennis's dopamine signaling, but one has worse side effects than the other. After students predict their treatment's effect upon dopamine signaling, they perform the treatment and evaluate the results. They then complete a case report to discuss the diagnosis and treatment of their patient. By engaging with a real-world problem and the concepts required to solve it, students learn science by acting like scientists.